Hello, I am Danielle. I am the news director for WXTC 88.1, and today I am here with the Lieutenant Governor of Pennsylvania, and I'm going to be asking him some questions on the Pathways to Pardons program. Cool. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Danielle. Great. Thanks for, uh, thanks for having me on your show. You're welcome. Thank you for coming to Teal. Welcome. I really like Teal. It's, uh, you, can, you get a feeling of um, there's a home feeling to it, and you have a really uh, cool and interesting vibe, um, interesting student body, and it's it's a really nice school. And I think I I like I would like to come back, but more importantly, I think I'm going to talk about all the cool things you're doing here at Teal. Yeah, it's definitely a very small community. I I love this school. Great. So it works out for me. So my first question actually is, why did you choose to speak here? What made you um, drawn to Teal? Well, I. Um, I've been talking about this idea of pardons and second chances. And so we started off, it seemed like, uh, at a snail pace in, in talking about this issue and going around the state. Mm -hmm. But we've kept going for a couple of years, and it's, it's now we've covered every corner of Pennsylvania. And so I knew I was going to come out towards Erie, and then, then we got a chance to um, set up a pathway to pardons with our friend Senator Michelle Brooks and she's a big fan of Teal and then we did a little bit of outreach with Teal and Teal was just immediately it's like you know when you you meet your best friend in school for the first time and you know that this person is is your friend yeah. it was that way with our connection with Teal and Teal basically we reached out they grabbed our hands we hugged each other and we've been hugging each other ever since so Teal wanted us to come, and we wanted to be with Teal, so that's why we're here. Oh, that's great. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about the program? I know in the lecture you spoke about it, um, but can you give us more of an out, outsider's look? Yeah. Well, so we've been wasting a lot of people's lives um, by giving them criminal records through this idea of being strong uh, or, or tough on crime, but we haven't really been tough on crime. We've been stupid because we have all these people who um, have criminal records for things that they did a long, long time ago, even though they're, they're changed and they're better people and they're good citizens now, they can't get a good job, they can't be volunteers, they can't be involved in their church on a lot of issues, and it really hurts us all. So I saw that a lot of these people were, were felt very discouraged and hopeless, and everybody makes mistakes in life, but I think people should be entitled to a second chance. So my job as lieutenant governor, I have the duty of being chair of the Board of Pardons. So in that capacity, I, I worked on this initiative with others called Pathway to Pardons. So basically, we're about giving people hope. And it's, it's that power of hope that someone can get their record cleaned up and they can get their full citizenship rights and be back with their families and in their neighborhoods and with their church. So that's, that's what it's about. It's about second chances. And people have said to me, too, you know, once in a while they say, aren't you being soft on crime? And I say, no, we're not being soft on crime. We're being strong on justice. So it's been, a, it's been a fun. It's been a powerful um, thing to see people who change and get a second chance. But we still have more work to do. We're trying to get the word out to everybody. I'm excited to see where this program uh, it's goes. Great. Yeah. Um, so what level of crime can be pardoned? Pretty much anything. And, and I'll be frank. That I don't even love when people say, I'll be honest or I'll be frank. Of course, <laughs> I expect nothing less. But so a lot of people ask me, they say, I guess that's all nonviolent crime. And I say, it's, it's pretty much all kinds of crime. And people say, well, you don't want to give people a pardon if there's violence involved, right? But sometimes you have um, someone who's a victim of domestic abuse because there were drugs and alcohol involved, and then they fought back, and then both people got charged. And then there's no other violence in that person's life after that, you know, that they've gone decades being a good citizen and, and that kind of thing. And you can sometimes those are types of cases where you would consider a pardon. Um, so it's really all, all kinds of crimes are eligible for a pardon, but the key thing is we, I want to look into their eyes and members of the Board of Pardons want to look into that person's eyes and see and hear and hear their testimony about how they've changed and sometimes hear others 
and usually the kinds of crimes that are going to be eligible for a pardon are where there's a long period of time where that person's life has been exemplary and that's in many cases and sometimes it's just you see it was a stupid mistake that someone made like recreational marijuana use or somebody made a stupid mistake of retail theft they wait, were waiting in line to buy a coffee and they got impatient and walked out with the, co the coffee and then you know it's retail theft so you can see people made st stupid mistakes but we shouldn't punish them forever with a criminal record because we really punish their family and their their neighbors because they can't be a productive citizen they really punish all of us because they become a burden on the uh, on the system so let's help them move forward and uh, make a difference okay. um, how long can someone be in the program once they're a part of it yeah it's uh, it's usually first it's about information so pathway to pardons is here's the information that's available and if you follow the steps and directions of the pardons process, you know, if you're, if you're the kind of person who really should be given a pardon, then you'll probably get one. If, um, so that, so that it, takes, it takes a while to get that actual hearing, to get the hearing to determine whether you can actually get a pardon hearing. Um, it's a merit review. So you have to go through that process. And right now, it takes a few years to do it. It used to take even longer. It used to take over six years. But we've cut that backlog down. So now it takes a, a little under three. We'd like it to take about a year. So, um, but uh, if you get a pardon, um, most likely you're not going to need to worry about the pardon system anymore. And hopefully, you do everything you're supposed to do. And we haven't really had any circumstances where someone got a pardon, and then they went out and did something where you said that it was all wrong, they shouldn't have got a pardon. So far, people have just gone on and been productive citizens. OK. Um, are there any other colleges in Pennsylvania that you have spoken at about this? Um, we have been uh, at LaSalle University in Philadelphia. We were at a Drexel facility uh, from Philadelphia and talked about it. We, um, we will be at more schools, but, but yeah, Teal is the only school that's really prominently featured uh, Pathway to Pardons solely, so we're very pleased and happy and thankful to, to Teal, and, and I think Teal's taking the lead, and I hope, I hope Teal will talk about uh, you know, what, what uh, the university is doing or the college is doing to encourage people to seek pardons. We feel very honored to have you here, so. Well, we're honored to be with you. Um, how many people are estimated to enroll in this program, do you think? We, um, we had a backlog of a lot of uh, years of people actually applying for pardons. And I can't give you a specific number but I, right now, but I can tell you that each quarter where we review the cases of people seeking pardons it's a couple hundred people at a time and so it's a lot and the bottom line that we're actually a victim of our own success because the more cases we've heard and the more pardons that we've granted the more people get in line to want to seek a pardon so we're up 20 percent so literally it's thousands of people need pardons and we think there are many, many people out there who are going to become aware that they're eligible for a pardon. Sometimes that's the problem, you know. People have that shame that even if it's, it's a crime that happened a long time ago and it was something that was immature or related to addiction, that person is ashamed to come out in public and admit it. And we need them to, to show up, seek the pardon, and then ask in public for that forgiveness. And then that person's going to be, you know, able to be a full citizen again. Okay. Um, I know you discussed also in the lecture that there were a few people helping you with this program. Yeah. Um, who are those people who specifically is helping with the program? Well, the great thing is, you know, we find this is in state government that often you have a lot of forces working against each other, and every time people deal with government, they feel like, ah, oh, I get put in a phone tree, and somebody, they keep sending me to the other office, so we're aware of that, and the amazing thing is that we have a great partnership here. We have my office, which is the Lieutenant Governor's office. We're in partnership with the Board of Pardons, which I'm a chair, the chair of, but we also have a, a, it's a state agency, the Board of Pardons. Then we have Corrections, 
um, and Secretary Wetzel and, and the folks who work in corrections are helping, probation and parole, the Department of Drug and Alcohol programs, because so often these crimes are, are related to uh, people being involved with drugs and alcohol and not being themselves. And then they, they recover, and that, but then they have this wreckage which prevents them from moving forward. And then we have a lot of um, advocate groups, too, who help us. Um, that are that are citizens that are not in government that want to help people who have made mistakes. So we have a lot of folks helping, and it's a it's a big coalition. But those are some of the prominent people who have been all over the state with me, talking about uh, the power of hope. Um, do you think the poverty rate will go down with this program? Because I know sometimes with a lot of parolees and and mm. people who have been expunged. Yeah. It's hard for them to find a job, yes. like you said. So do you think maybe the poverty rate will go down? I, it's such a good question because it's right down Broadway, yes. Yes, I do think that the poverty, po poverty rate will go down because you're so right. Um, someone with a criminal conviction can't get a good job. Maybe years ago they might have had a chance at it, but not with the background checks and the different uh, laws and procedures that prevent ex-offenders from having jobs. So naturally that person is either going to get a menial job and need to depend on, on uh, welfare or other things and or go back to crime. So, you know, that's going to lead to, to uh, more poverty. And if you enable people to um, lift themselves up and out, they can become middle class. They can get a good job. They can be a mentor to others. They can help other people succeed. They can support their family. And isn't that in everybody's interests? I think so. So yeah. we'll, we help ourselves when we, we help others to um, get a second chance. That's great. Well, that is all the questions I have for you today. All thank good questions. You, thank you for joining me, and thank you for coming, back, um, coming to Teal. I really appreciate My you My pleasure. Thanks me. for the interview. It was good nice luck. meeting you. Thanks a lot. Thank you.